Okay, on uh, uh, with networking there, and um, yeah, some some examples of uh, networking protocols, but also a lesson in these examples. Um, there is X twenty five. X twenty five is old. X twenty five is slow. Um, X25 is based on TransPAC in France and DataPAC in Canada, and uh, a number of uh, business analysts have felt that DataPAC's excessive charges uh, led to the failure of a number of early uh, networking companies in, in Canada. Uh, I used it fairly expensively in my ill-spent youth, um, it, it, you know, it definitely was slow. Um, I believe the fastest that you could push it to was, was 19.2. But as I said in the story of the, uh, the woman who, uh, worked with the military and, and felt that they might be, uh, feeding her a line about setting up, um, uh, X25 networks over barbed wire. Um, I believe it. I, you know, it, the the thing is solid. It's bulletproof. It's it's one of the OSI models, and the OSI, uh, sorry, it's not the OSI models. One of the actual OSI protocols, and the OSI protocols are nothing if not over engineered. So X25 had. Um, a lot of error detection and correction. Um, it uh, was suitable to noisy uh, communications lines of the times. Um, and, you know, that's, that's why it was particularly slow. Now, as uh, time went by and, and people... Uh, Number one got better communications lines as as uh, businesses were pushing the telcos to say we need you know cleaner transmission we need uh, less noisy channels um, and so you know the telcos started providing that uh, hadn't been uh, terribly important with just uh, voice calls and so. Uh, other protocols uh, started to be developed, and um, one of which uh, was Frame Relay. And, and Frame Relay, I, I'm simply uh, using as an example of these uh, next generation of protocols. They uh, cut out an awful lot of the overhead of error detection, error correction, uh, redundancy and so forth that had been part of X25 because of uh, the prevalence of noise on the channels and therefore frame relay was uh, making packet switch networks much faster much more reliable uh, much more useful because of cutting out this this processing overhead. Now, uh, in the fullness of time, uh, this and, and Cell Relay and other uh, technologies um, evolved into ATM. Uh, oh dear. Uh, I won't even try. Um, I'll have to look it up sometime. You can look it up sometime if you're interested. ATM was a uh, uh, another networking standard, and and this um, came more recently, particularly with the development of uh, the combination of voice, video, data, all on a single network, and uh, a number of vendors were were pushing it and companies were interested in it because 
they felt that they could set up their own networks, manage their own networks. They wouldn't necessarily be um, beholden to the telcos. Uh, and they uh, could manage their own mixed communications. The reason for this was that uh, ATM was not only, you know, uh, banking on the reliability that was coming along with the communications channels, but um, had a fixed and small packet size. I, I believe ATM packets are 53 bytes a piece. Um, and this allows you, because you're, you're breaking up the bandwidth with very small packets, you can then allocate specific predictable packets to a voice channel or to a video channel and say, you know, these are reserved for uh, these specific uh, uh, communications which we would normally, for which we would normally use circuit switching and the data will just go in, you know, wherever it fits in the, the leftover packets. And um, so that would work out very well when you were dealing with mixed communication. Unfortunately, what happened in business terms is that the, the businesses found out that, yes, you could manage your own uh, communications, but the operative word here is unfortunately manage. And that means that you are responsible for it. You have to uh, do the management. You have to understand what your communications needs are. And you have to pay for the staff to do the, the management. Businesses uh, who were big into outsourcing at the time anyways... Uh, just felt, no, we'll leave it in the hands of the telcos. So, um, uh, you know, ATM uh, turned out to be a you know, good technology if you were, in fact, a telco providing a variety of services to a variety of different customers. But it didn't turn out to be that helpful uh, to the businesses themselves. Um, and I do remember... Uh, at the time, a lot of uh, telcos and communications providers proudly, you know, boasting that they provided ATM networks. And, you know, it's sort of like, okay, good for you. That helps you. But, you know, it doesn't uh, do anything for me because I'm still, you know, at the upper layers here. So, um, some other... Uh, issues uh, related to networking um, but uh, not strictly technical uh, that we'll get into in a few future uh, snippets here